for joining us today uh, to hear about automating large-scale cloud migration to Google Cloud <coughs> with Velostrada. We're uh, very excited to be here today for the first time on stage as part of the Google family following the acquisition of Velostrada by Google literally last month. Uh, my name is Isabel Scholl. I'm the former CEO of Velostrada. And a co-founder with me is Adi Degani, uh, a former CTO and co-founder. And going forward, uh, we're going to continue to lead the Velostrada team and product. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, so what you're going to hear uh, in this session today about is how to effectively uh, migrate enterprise workloads to Google Cloud at scale. Uh, we're going to start with an introduction of the product uh, and discuss some technical concepts behind it. Uh, then we'll dive in into some of the automation and scaling features of the product. Uh, we'll do a demo that demonstrates uh, some of these capabilities in live action, uh, follow with customer case studies, and then summarize it. Uh, an important note here is that everything that we discussed today is generally available, field-proven, and ready to use at scale. <clears throat> so before I start, I'm going to do a show, show of hands. Uh, how many, many of you in the audience um, are planning or have already engaged in some kind of a cloud migration from on-premise to any public cloud? Oh, that's a good showing. Great. Uh, and of those, how many are working on, let's just say, large-scale migration, like hundreds of workloads or more? Production workloads. Oh, great. Uh, so pretty uh, wide uh, <coughs> audience. And uh, you're in good company. Uh, in fact, uh, exploring uh, recent uh, reports about enterprise cloud adoption, you see the picture is pretty clear. Uh, enterprises are moving away from on-premises or even hosted data centers, so-called private cloud, into use of public cloud. Uh, even, um, you know, the, if you look at, for instance, um, you know, those two uh, columns here, two years ago, uh, the investment in on-premises versus public cloud was similar. And look what happened in the last two years. Huge difference building up between the two. Um, looking uh, at, uh, even if you look at another interesting observation, if you look at hybrid cloud implementations, which have been widely popular and still are, uh, with enterprise, you still see some uh, decline in favor of more public cloud uh, use. So and if, we, if we dive in a little bit more into the cloud initiatives, we find another interesting uh, thing, which is that the two topmost initiatives within cloud initiatives are move more workloads faster and deal with the cost, optimizing the cost of workloads that are already in the cloud. So why is that? Uh, you know, if you look back two years ago, there has been a lot of focus on first modernizing workloads, optimizing for cloud usage, and then moving on. What CIOs are starting to realize in the last years is that those uh, modernization projects take a very long time, consume a lot of resources. In the meanwhile, uh, cloud migration projects are being delayed. Uh, and uh, that delay, in fact, means you need to invest more in infrastructure. This is aging, but you don't want to do it because you want to move out. So it's a perfect storm. And many CIOs say, OK, stop here. I don't want to get rid of, I want to get rid of infrastructure management, move infrastructure into service. Let's just move it all. And uh, when they do that, they do it and say, well, let's modernize during, after, in a pragmatic manner. But let's start get moving out. Now that's, this is why it's no surprise that if you look, according to Gardner, uh, a recent report, a quote, the fastest growing segment within the cloud business is by far infrastructure as a service. 36% uh, growth, year over year growth over the last year, and a $40 billion a year uh, uh, business in 2018. So the bottom line is enterprises are moving fast uh, and at scale. But when you decide to move at scale, this introduces a whole set of new challenges that you need to address uh, and to avoid a bottleneck in the migration process itself. So it's one thing to move dozens of workloads. It's a whole different story when you need to deal with thousands or workloads that need to be moved. How do we avoid this being the next two, three years delay? What do you deal with multi-source? When you move a whole data center, that includes virtual machines, but it also includes some physical servers, 
What do you do with uh, previous deployment you did to another cloud when it was maybe the only option available, and now that there are more options, uh, maybe more cost effective, how do you take at mass large amount of workloads that are, say, at AWS and move them into GCP? Uh, how do you deal with complex applications that are in the data center, SAP, uh, multi tier complex workloads with large databases, which have very strict downtime requirements? And then, last but not least, how do you mitigate the risk in moving those workloads? Uh, many enterprise customers have told us that uh, this is actually a barrier to adoption, because if something doesn't work, I can't afford to have downtime and, uh, that for, for days without my application running. So these are the main challenges. And uh, Velostrata has been designed for the ground up to address the various, very exact challenges. This is enterprise-grade, field-proven uh, solution that actually focuses on three major use cases. Number one, data center migration, horizontally moving whole data centers into public cloud. Number two, the ability to take, in large scale, workloads that are running in another cloud, say, for instance, AWS, and move them into Google Cloud. And number three, a specific focus on SAP. You heard today in the keynote the, the partnership for, with SAP. We're actually taking it to the next level in terms of the migration and offering uh, working on SAP migration, both lift and shift, as well as lift and modernize, meaning taking their existing uh, DB2 or Oracle or SQL original databases and moving them into HANA in conjunction with moving them to the cloud. Uh, so let's talk about the product. What does, how does it really work? Um, so there are two fundamental concepts underlying the Velostrata technology. Number one, uh, we actually offer the ability to take you know, stateful, large workloads running on-premises and literally within minutes have it run it in the cloud, Opera fully operational, irrespective of the side of the data that is attached to that workload or the latency is across the WAN. We call this streaming in analogy to video streaming. So you don't have to download the entire video file to start watching it. So in the same idea, you don't have to replicate all the data to the cloud to start computing it or consuming it. So the impact of that is that from a downtime perspective, you suffer a few minutes of downtime versus sometimes hours or days. But it also allows you to start your validation and migration acceleration uh, much faster than other solutions. The other fundamental important concept is agentless design. Uh, and what does this mean? Uh, this means that we don't install any agent on the workload of uh, the actual machines that are being migrated. This is, turns out to be hugely important for enterprises because it means that you don't have to know, have intimate knowledge of how the application works, how to sync it up, uh, how to orchestrate multi-tier applications. Uh, and it turns out to be a huge money saver because you did much less headcount and human manual labor in doing it. So those two, agentless streaming basically means much, much faster and much cheaper. Uh, the other third element is also being safer. We'll talk about it. So uh, how, how does it really work? Well, uh, so the solution starts with deploying a virtual appliance, uh, which is right here, uh, in the data source uh, of the data center or our cloud. Uh, and then there is an automatic on-demand and scale-up fashion deployment of one or more cloud extensions uh, in the cloud regions of your choice. Could be multiple regions, et cetera. Then uh, let's say that a user said, well, oh, I'm sorry, there's also a one-time setup. You need to set up the VPN. You need to set up the VPC. And have, after one, this setup of the infrastructure, we're ready to start doing migration. For instance, a user can pick using our, the plugin that we have into the VMware Management Console, the vCenter, can actually pick one or more VMs or a whole application and say, I want to run in the cloud. When this happens, our uh, right here backend appliance no, so take control over the VM, shut it down <coughs> in a graceful manner, uh, take control over its disk, and essentially starts the boot process in the cloud. It establishes a data channel with a cloud extension, uh, which in turn creates a whole kind of a virtual disk in the cloud that uh, corresponds to the remote storage, and then starts the boot process off of that virtual disk in the cloud. Now, <coughs> normally, this would be 
uh, problematic if it would be just implemented this way. But fortunately, uh, we've actually implemented a very extensive layer of WAN optimization that makes this work in as good performance as on-prem and sometimes even faster. It includes uh, caching. For instance, all the operating system images are very similar. We see 95 to 98 percent similarity on different or similar uh, flavors, and those can be completely served locally. Uh, we do, uh, for data that does need to be transferred, we offer network deduplication, uh, compression, predictive prefetch based on a number of heuristics, uh, read ahead, and so on and so forth. So the vast majority of the operations occur in the cloud. We also uh, commit all the right operations locally in the cloud using our storage subsystem that is highly resilient, highly available in the cloud. Uh, so the bottom line, within minutes, you're up and running. We also have an auto uh, adaptation layer that knows to take the instances and convert them automatically to be able to run in the cloud. Driver injection, uh, licensing enforcement, uh, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So the, the bottom line is you have an instance running here, and magically, a few minutes later, it's running fully operational in the cloud. Now, once we do that, in the background, we kick, uh, actually, in parallel, a data migration storage that takes all the call data and start migrating it. But important to note, the workloads are already running operational in the cloud while the data migrates. You don't have to wait for it to start running. Uh, <coughs> while doing this, uh, the system continues to operate. And when data is fully to, uh, ready, fully migrated, then you can hit uh, the detach operation that essentially allows you to cut the cord and actually do the conversion to completely cloud storage, and then you're all done. Uh, important to know that <coughs> while you're at stage two, and before you cut the cord, so to speak, you have the option to roll back instantly within minutes, because we always keep all the changes synced back into the data center, which is, very, again, uh, turns out to be very important. Uh, one of our customers, Cardinal Health, reported about 4% of rollback typically due to misconfigurations of the network or other elements, elements that pr prevented from that workload to operate in a proper manner in the cloud. So knowing that you have that allows you to go at scale without having to worry about what would happen if that workload didn't work. So very important. <coughs> so overall, again, I showed you how do we take a workload and within literally minutes have it operational in the cloud. And now we'll turn and see how does this work. We need to deal with hundreds of workloads at the same time. Turn it over to Adi. Guys, thanks for uh, joining us for the session. Uh, so I'll talk about the features that really make migration at scale work. And one of the things that we wanted to ensure that when we go to the enterprise, uh, we can fit into the way things are being done in this data center today uh, and augment that with additional capabilities for automation uh, so, that, so that you can uh, weave it into your practices, whether it's workflow management or uh, orchestration. So uh, just a show of hands, uh, how many of you are uh, using VMware on-prem? That's great. So. Um, you know, we saw a lot of customers making investments over, you know, the last 10, 15 years in their VMware uh, environment, and that goes beyond just the compute. It goes into uh, to uh, operations management and monitoring and health management. And what we wanted to do is is really take that environment and augment it in a natural way, so that it will reduce the learning curve of. Um, moving these workloads to the cloud or using the clouds in tandem with that environment in the hybrid scenario. So we've built the management of our solution with tight integration into the vSphere platform, into the vSphere uh, vCenter web client, augmenting and uh, extending the existing uh, objects that we're going to deal with, which is the virtual data center and the virtual machine. Um, so you'll see in the demo that uh, we'll show in a moment, you'll see how that looks like in work. Um, now, when it comes to large scale, of course, we're not expecting users to go and click on each VM out of your 1,500 VM inventory that you have in that cluster. And this is where we built a set of uh, tools for automation. So we, uh, we have a published REST API that you can go and use with your favorite orchestrator whether it's vRealize Automation or whether uh, it is uh, uh, Ansible or another um, solution of choice. 
Uh, we also offer a PowerShell module for scripting integration, as well as a built-in uh, mechanism for uh, orchestration of the large uh, large scale migration and this is what a feature we call the automation runbook the automation runbook really gives you out of the box experience of migrating large sets of VMs and not just uh, individual servers but uh, giving you the ability to describe full stacks full application stacks and can be anywhere from tens and hundreds of VMs as well as controlling the information on how they're going to be configured in the cloud, what security groups they're going to go into, what tagging strategy you want to apply. Uh, you can select uh, what uh, instance types they're going to use, what disk types, how they're going to be called, uh, as well as the ordering between the VMs when you're moving the different tiers in that stack. And we'll see that all in the demo. The automation runbook comes with a very simple UI to use. Uh, it also comes with a REST API, so you, again, can tie it into your automation um, um, mechanisms and, and practices. So we'll dive into that in more detail, also in the context of the migration practice and how to implement that. Now, one of the things that uh, come up very often is that when you're deploying in a VMware environment, you get built in over a subscription of your cluster resources. So it's very easy to go and say, I want a, you know, a 12 CPU machine with 24 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, and even if it doesn't use it, you're not paying for it any extra. But when it comes to the cloud, you get SLAs around the system performance and the types uh, of machines that you get, but you're also paying for it. So it's a very important uh, element is to properly size your machines before you migrate them. Now, um, when we deploy in a VMware environment, we have uh, the tight integration that I talked about. And part of that tight integration is also the ability to monitor your workloads as, the, as they operate. So while they're running, we will monitor them. We will identify their utilization of resources. And that will help us uh, provide recommendation what instance type to choose. Um, later on, of course, after migration, you get the, the benefits of the automatic uh, sizing um, uh, uh, recommendations that are provided on an ongoing basis once running in GCP. Um, and of course, for the uh, sizing recommendation, we'll also take into consideration specific GCP features. A um, feature like custom instance types is a very important feature. It allows you to select exactly the, the size of machines that uh, you're going to need, um, as well as the consideration of sustained use discounts into the cost uh, decisions. One feature that comes very handy when you're migrating a lot of machine is the ability to validate, validate your plan, validate your practice, validate your configuration. And when it comes to critical uh, workloads, sometimes you want to do it, you want to do the validations before you actually touch your application. So we have the ability to snapshot an entire set of machines that are running in an application stack and bring up a thin clone of that stack in GCP in an isolated VPC or isolated network subnet so there's no conflict with your on-prem and allow you to validate your procedure validate the configuration, validate performance. Uh, and you can do that in a click of a button or an API call. And you can do that without um, waiting for any data to transfer. And this is the beauty of the uh, streaming technology that EC mentioned earlier. Now, uh, when we go into enterprise environments, in many cases, they were built to control, there were mechanisms built to control a lot of the incoming traffic. But when you're migrating, traffic is outgoing. Uh, and this is where uh, people typically struggle in identifying how much bandwidth they need to allocate. How do they govern the bandwidth that is used for migration versus the other SLAs that they, they need to provide uh, to their organization for, um, because the users are not moving to the cloud. So um, in order to eliminate the complexity associated with deciding how much bandwidth do I give this VM when it migrates or that VM when it migrates, and what do I do when I have a data center 
that now I want to distribute across multiple regions because I have that capability with the cloud. And I want to bring the workloads closer to the users. So this is where we've built a governed uh, bandwidth management mechanism that enables, uh, um, uh, enables you with uh, a simple setting at the site level, decide how much you want to allocate to migration. Um, and the system will do uh, its work automatically. You don't need to uh, split it manually between the different workloads and the number of workloads that are migrating. Worth mentioning some additional enterprise-grade capabilities. First of all, security, encryption, network security, and network policies. The solution has been built to be able to work within your private address space. There is no need for you to open internet access for it. You can uh, operate it completely within your VPN and your private address space. And we support features like private Google access so that you don't need to expose more than you were planning to. Okay? Uh, we also support features like working behind NAT, working behind HTTP proxies. So anything that you are familiar with from your environment is something that we can work with and you don't uh, need to go through painful changes to your existing uh, infrastructure. Now, measurement, monitoring is an important piece. How do you know that you're maximizing your available resources? Can you migrate more? Can you migrate faster? Are you, uh, is the application getting the performance it needs? Um, this is all something that is, uh, requires a lot of telemetry. And a lot of you know from uh, VMware deployments on-prem that uh, monitoring is, is, a, is a difficult environment to manage. So we went on and built a, essentially a, a Velostrata hosted service that will perform the log aggregation, telemetry collection, and will give you the results processed and analyzed into your vSphere environment as uh, readily available graphs without uh, uh, you know, the need to beef up the deployment on-prem. So before we uh, dive into, some, uh, into the demo, uh, a little bit on migration practices and, and some insights that we have learned together with our partners and our customers in the process of migrating thousands of machines. First of all, it's very important to determine ahead of time what is the inventory that you want to move? What do you want to move first? What do you want to move next? Coordinate in advance with the application owners. Coordinate in advance with the infrastructure team, with the networking team. Identify the workloads that you don't want to move so you don't waste time on them. Identify workloads that were originally problematic and maybe remained on physical machines because they couldn't be virtualized before. Uh, this allows you to plan ahead. And planning ahead is important because when you want to migrate a lot of machines, when you want to achieve scale, uh, the best uh, practice we've seen working well is to do that by establishing a pipeline. Make sure that you always have machines identified and ready to move. Create that pipeline, and you can migrate even hundreds of machines per day. And uh, for that discovery process, uh, we've been working with uh, various partners, uh, partners like Risk Networks and Cloudemise and, uh, and others uh, that are joining uh, in, and, um, uh, and we continue to work with them to optimize. And they can also uh, integrate well with our automation runbook and REST APIs. And if you're not integrated and you want to be, then uh, this is all public uh, APIs, and we'll be happy to share. Now, automation is key, and we'll show some of it as part of the demo. This is a, uh, this is a case study. Uh, these are actual measurements from a customer project. Uh, this is a customer that has migrate, uh, migrated uh, several hundreds of machines. And you can see, as we were working with the customer, to uh, identify the best practice for them, to build the team, to build the, uh, the migration practice itself, we converged with them on an agile approach. The agile approach allowed them to increase their velocity eight to 10 times, which means they 
uh, at some point, they were able to migrate about 150 machines in one day. And what is that uh, uh, sprint approach or agile approach looking like? Like, uh, if you have a team or you structure a set of teams that are dealing with different aspects of your environment, uh, you can create this pipeline where you spend one week identifying the inventory for the next, next uh, sprint, working with the application owners to schedule the migration, to schedule the validations, and then prepare the automation runbook, validate it. The automation runbook is a self-documenting plan, so you don't need to do that twice. And then go into the next week and you execute the plan. The machines migrate and are live within typically just a couple of hours. So you can have your application owners come in on a predictable schedule, perform the validation, and, uh, and, uh, and hand over to the users. And after a set of trial period, you can decide to cut the cord and complete the migration, or if any issues came up and there are unexpected, leverage our rollback feature to be able to move the machines to operate back on-prem with full uh, consistent state. Uh, so this is an example of a sprint that we're migrating uh, about 70-plus uh, machines in one go. And what you can see here in the graph is that uh, the uh, blue line, and don't catch me on the color, uh, is uh, the number of machines that we're running and how long it, takes for them, it took for them to, to uh, actually run and be live in the cloud. And you can see that within about two hours, the entire set of machines across all the migration groups and tiers were up and running. Within the next day and a half, the data was migrated in the background. But that doesn't prevent the application from running, which means you can be uh, live in the cloud in just minutes, regardless of the size. So we'll switch over to a quick demo. Um, we didn't have much time. We, we had a lot to show. So um, we're going to show a time sped uh, um, recorded demo. We have a showcase downstairs that uh, you can go in and play with that, uh, with these different scenarios interactively. So first, we'll start with the vCenter uh, integration. I'll go through that quickly. Uh, so this is the well-known um, vSphere web client user interface. And you can see the integration through extension of the virtual machine object. So you can select a virtual machine, right-click on it, and you'll get the Velostrata menu. You have several options for the migration. Uh, two notable ones are the running cloud option, which allows you to take any workload, run it in the cloud, in minutes without having to move the storage. This is good if you want to try things. If you want to test how your machine will work on a machine with four terabytes of RAM, how will it work with, on a machine with 128 CPUs, how will it work with a GPU or a TPU that you never had access to. You can do that without having to resort to building your application from scratch. Uh, and regardless of how much data you have, it will be accessible using our streaming mechanism. The second notable uh, option is Migrate. You decided that you want to move. Let's do that. Uh, so we'll click on Migrate. And you'll get a very simple wizard built into the system. You'll select your target, your target VPC. You'll select your... Um, uh, target uh, uh, machine type, and this is where you can see the different right sizing recommendations coming in. Uh, w whether you want the machine that best fits the current provision size, or, uh, size on VMware, or whether you want one that is based on the actual utilization, which in this case is very low utilization. Then you'll select the storage policy, and we can uh, talk about that uh, offline. Select the disk type, and that's it. You're ready to go. So let's click Finish. And now we'll see the integration into the vSphere interface from a monitoring perspective. Uh, there is a portlet that shows up for that machine. So we're not creating a new object. We're not creating 
uh, we're not, you're not losing the admin context for that machine. And as you can see, within the vSphere environment, you can see the status of the machine running in the cloud and the status of its migration. So this machine had, uh, has uh, over a terabyte worth of disks, about three disks, and it is up and running in 11 minutes. Another thing you can see in this is the uh, integration, the further integration with it into vSphere, which is integration into uh, events and issues and alarms. So it will all propagate into your vRealize uh, uh, operation management. 11 minutes, over one terabyte. It took me longer to upload the video. So uh, let's see what happens if things don't work as well. Maybe there's a quota issue. Maybe the application owner is not ready to come in and do the validation. So you need to roll back. Rolling back is as easy as moving to the cloud. So this machine has been going on. It's running live. Storage is migrating in the background, as you can see in the bar here. And we decided that we want to move it back. So another right click on that VM. And we'll select the run on premises. And that's it, just a single click. And what you'll see is that the system will be back on-prem in just a few minutes. Since the system is running in the cloud, we um, constantly synchronize the change set that was happening in the last few minutes or up to certain uh, change capacity. And we'll replicate it back on-prem to the disks on-prem. So you can move back at any point in time. And if you have backup happening on-prem, it will always backup the latest version of that machine while it's running in the cloud. So this is the integration into the web UI, kind of tasting that. Let's talk about the run book automation. Obviously, when you have 1,500 machines and when you have um, um, stacks of 30 machines or more, you're not going to do multi-select uh, or do that manually. So um, this is where our run book automation feature comes into play. And we'll start with a simple, uh, a simple multi-tier application. This is a Sugar CRM setup. And you can see this uh, application running on-prem on the VMware side. Uh, we'll even go and create some new state, add some data, just to demonstrate that you can migrate immediately without having to deal with complex synchronization and cutover. So let's migrate that application. First, we'll create a runbook. To create the runbook, you go into the Velostrada web interface, select your source, vSphere or AWS. Um, additional sources will come later. You'll select your source data center or virtual data center where your inventory resides and the target cloud. They, we are going to get the runbook export, exported in CSV format, so very easy to work with in a spreadsheet editor. Uh, so let's take that inventory that was exported. A lot of information is already included there. What's the configuration on-prem? What's the naming? As well as uh, default selections for the target. The next thing we'll do is filter out that inventory just to the set that we want to migrate in this run. And we will also create order. Uh, this allows you to take a multi-tier application, define the different components in each tier, identify the order between them, and also identify service probes. So when a certain tier is coming up, you can probe that the service is available before you start up the next uh, set of VMs in the tier. So let's take that uh, CSV file and save it. Next thing we want to do is apply right sizing to, uh, to that. So we'll take the CSV file that we filtered, we'll input it into the recommendation engine, and we'll get uh, right-sizing recommendations built into the entire uh, set of machines that are in that spreadsheet. We'll select the relevant uh, recommendations, copy them over to the target instance type that we want to use. And the runbook is ready. Now, as you can see, the runbook is a self-documenting plan, which means 
You don't have to take all that information and keep it in other inventories, in other repositories. We'll take that runbook, and you can apply additional information there, like your tagging strategy. Define your labels, and they will be applied when the machines are moving. So let's go and start the migration job. Now, the migration is done on a full set of machines. To uh, verify the operation, the progress, etc. you go into the monitoring uh, page, and this is where you will see the state of each VM that is currently migrating. Effectively, you will see the system change their state as they go through coming up live, transferring the storage, and ready to detach. When it's ready to detach, the migration effectively has completed. So let's look at the application. The application is now online. OK. So um, what we have in the showcase uh, downstairs is also a uh, demo of additional scenarios moving from uh, AWS to GCP using the automation runbook. And again, the automation runbook is fully um, available both in the UI and in REST API, so you can tie it to your own orchestration or, an, or your own automation uh, procedures. So uh, the remaining time we have, we want to see how all this great technology translates into actual business benefits for the customers through some uh, case, case studies uh, from actual customers that we have deployed our solution with. Uh, um, so we, we've done uh, uh, numerous uh, deployments, of thousands of VMs uh, to, you know, from on-premises public cloud. Uh, for example, we have one public sector uh, company in the UK that actually has been running into issues with respect to having to uh, vacate their uh, hosted data center. Um, within uh, six months, they were way, way behind timelines and budget. Uh, we're introducing to that uh, um, scenario, and within pretty much six weeks and about 10x faster, completed the migration in time. Um, and there's, as you can see, different segments, industry segments that we've been working in. Healthcare is one, financial, oil and energy, and, and a few others. Um, and uh, what comes across uh, is really you know, three major benefits. One, uh, significant time savings. Number two, significant cost savings. And number three, safe journey, right? And this is all what you see in, in our solution. Uh, let's take uh, specifically Cardinal Health, uh, which have been uh, uh, an, uh, have gone through a, an interesting journey. Um, they've uh, gone to, you know, come to the conclusion that they need to, again, uh, decommission the data centers, do a move, an all-in of uh, several data centers to the cloud. They started their journey, actually, with a different cloud, uh, AWS, actually, and moved uh, with Velostrata uh, quite a bit of work. But again, uh, they had uh, time constraints, uh, they have budget constraints, and uh, basically decided after selecting uh, or ch basically testing a few, uh, a few solutions to, to uh, go with Velostrata. And we were able to migrate about 1,000 servers within six months. By the way, not all of it is actual migration, as Adi pointed out. There's discovery, there's planning, there's assessment, getting alignment from application owners. All this come into play. But a rough, uh, we are a cadence of 100 servers per week or 5,000 servers per year is something we're seeing consistently happening with a lot of our customers uh, using our solution. And then, midway through their prop, uh, journey into one cloud, they decided on a, made a business decision to switch to go to another cloud, uh, this time to Google Cloud. And during that time, uh, they also used Velostrata to actually make all that transition uh, uh, very effectively. And actually, as we speak, they're moving hundreds of machines per week uh, with us. Um, 
And you can see uh, savings of uh, millions of dollars due to the fact that they didn't need to have to deal with uh, nearly as much headcount as they would have needed without a solution. Um, we're running a little bit short on time, so I'll just mention one more, which is uh, another energy company that we work with. Again, we're using a different vendor. It's the blue line or the blue color there. And the trajectory of their completion was two, two and a half years for moving their, completing their migration. Uh, with the 5x acceleration that we offered in our solution after they uh, chose us, they basically com you know, compressed the time to six months for the same amount of workloads. Uh, and not only that, but they also realized about a million dollars of savings uh, due to the reduced headcount that was required due to the simplicity on the automation of the solution. So in quick summary, um, uh, you know, this is the time for enterprises to make the move, uh, not stay behind competition. If you want to move at scale, I think Google Cloud is your choice, and we strongly believe that Velostrata is the right solution. Um, for time perspective, uh, you get a very quick downtime or a very short downtime. 5x labor savings, or 80%, 5x acceleration compared to any other solution out there, and very easy solution to work with. Thank you very much.